Hi everyone, in this video we will go through few key problem types from simple interest and compound interest topic. So first, let's go through the formulas. Simple interest is PTR by 100, where P is principal, T is time in years, R is rate of interest and amount. Amount is total of simple interest plus principal. Similarly, compound interest CI is nothing but amount minus principal. An amount is given by principal into 1 plus i, I to the power n. i is nothing but rate of interest in decimal form. It can be written as i or it can be r. Right? Either of this. n is number of years. Right? Or number of times compounding happens in a year. From the same formula, from the same formula, we have derived rate of interest and n. Rate of interest from this particular formula, see if you shift if you shift the parameters or variables from one from left side to right side, right, you can find out only rate of interest and the formula would be anti-log of log A minus log P by N minus 1. Similarly, period N, that is number of years, time, would be log A minus log B by log of 1 plus I. I is rate of interest. Now, you don't have to remember all by heart these formulas, right? You can take this main formula, right, and then just find out r when you calculate you just find out r after substituting all other parameters right this r is obtained from this particular formula even period n is obtained from this particular formula itself effective rate of interest so in cases where compounding happens more than more than once in a year right suppose you want to compound it three months in a uh, three months or six months in a year right? or or every month you want to compound in that case the effective rate of interest is given by one plus i by q to the power q. q is number of times the compounding happens. So, for example, if I am compounding uh, every three months, then in a year, in a year it's going to be four times, right? If every three months I am compounding, so three into four, twelve months. So four times I'll be compounding. So q will be four, right? And i is the rate of interest, right? Now effective rate of interest and nominal rate of interest. Nominal rate of interest is the rate of interest for the entire year, right? Annual compound interest rate. Since I am compounding multiple times, right? The effect, the rate of interest would be bigger than the nominal rate of interest. Suppose I compound only once in a year, then the rate of interest is called as nominal rate of interest. But the same thing if I compound multiple times in a year, then that rate of interest is called as effective rate of interest. Effective rate of interest generally will be more than the nominal rate of interest. Now, what is depreciation? Depreciation is certain assets like machinery, vehicles, furniture, their price reduces as, as they get older. So, the formula for depreciation is amount is equal to principal into 1 minus i by n. So, remember the sign change, right? When you are calculating, when you are calculating uh, amount in the compound interest case, it is plus here, right? This is plus. But in depreciation, it just becomes reverse, minus because it is reducing. The amount is reducing as it get, gets as it gets older. So it is minus here. Now we will take few examples. These are one marker uh, problems. Calculate SI on rupees 18,000 for 4 months at 12.5% annum. Direct problem. Just take the formula. Simple interest is PTR by 100. Right. Remember time is always in years. Time is always in years. So if you have given 4 months, then take 4 by 12. Right. Principal is 18,000. And rate of interest is 12 and a half percent. 12 and a half can be written as it's a mixed fraction. So you can write it as proper fraction. How? 12 into 2, 24, 24 plus 1. It's like this. Right? 12 into 2 is 24. And 24 plus 1, this numerator, right? Is 25 by 2. Converting mixed fraction to proper fraction. So you get 25 by 2, right? Then you get the simple interest, which is 750 rupees. Now, similar problem, find SI on rupees 500 at 5% for 5 years. Same problem, direct, directly substitute in the formula. Here uh, you have 5 years, you can directly put 5 years here. Now third problem, what is the simple interest at rupees 650 for 14 weeks at 6%. Now it's same, same problem like earlier one, only difference is it's 14 weeks. Period should be in terms of years. That's why you have to convert this 14 weeks to years. Now in one year, how many weeks are there? 52 weeks are there in one year. So if you write 14 by 52, then you will be converting this particular time, this 14 weeks into years. So you can put 14 by 52 here, right, and 6% and principal. 
Now, what is the effective rate of interest when a sum lent at 12% compounded half yearly? Now, so you have rate of interest 12%, it's compounded half yearly. So that means uh, in a year, two times it's getting compounded. How many times? Two times. Two times it's getting compounded in a year because it's half yearly. That means it's Q. Q is 2, right? Number of times the compounding happens. What is the formula you have to use in this case? What rate of interest is given here is nominal rate of interest. Now you have to find effective rate of interest. What is the formula for that? So effective rate of interest is 1 plus i by q to the power q. i is the nominal rate that is given 12%. q is number of times the compounding happens. In a year, 2 times it happens 2 and here also you put 2. Right? 12% is the interest. So you put it in the decimal form 12 by 100. 12 by 100 which is 0 0.12 right substitute here and you will get effective rate of interest this is important this is an important formula please do remember now next one is find the interest on rupees 1500 so uh, principal is given this is principal this is rate of interest this is 145 days you have to convert into year so it will be divided by 365 145 days by 365 days. So that's what I'm writing here. 145 by 365, 4%. Principal is 1500. And I get the simple interest. Now let's look at uh, two marker and three marker problems. Here is a list. In what time a sum of rupees 500, that means principal is 500, earn rupees 975. That means compound interest is 975. That is, over and above 500 rupees, it will earn. That means it will get 974 rupees extra added to it. Right? So, compound interest is 975. Okay? Uh, it's Read the question carefully here. It's not that 500 will become 975. No. Here, to 500, 975 will get added. In what time a sum of rupees 500 will earn rupees 975? That is, I will be adding 975 to 500 rupees. And how much time does it need for this 975 to be added to 500? So basically, this is nothing but compound interest, 975. 6% is the rate of interest. If compound interest is payable half yearly. Now, half yearly means immediately it should strike that Q is equal to 2. It's compounded 2 times. Q is equal to 2. So the moment you know that there is, you know, multiple compounding in a year, you have to put this formula. Right? 1 plus r by q by to the power q or sometimes we instead of r we put i also right sometimes instead of r we put i also now the 6 percent you put it here in decimal form right in decimal form and this is the number of times it's compounded solve this you get rate of interest so you found rate of interest you have to find time so basically you have to use what is the main uh, uh, compound interest uh, formula amount is equal to principal into 1 plus r by r to the power n now we did not directly use this formula because we didn't know this r right we didn't know r what was given was this particular uh, uh, r which is nominal rate of interest right this is nominal rate of interest we need effective rate of interest when you're calculating compound interest so now we got r here we substitute this r we don't know n we need to find out n principal we know principal is 500 rupees amount we have to find out amount is nothing but principal principal plus ci is it not this is principal is my investment amount, my initial amount. CI is the interest. So when I add interest to the original amount, that is when I get the final amount, right? After a certain period of time, right? When I put principal, after a certain period of time, I get interest. And when I add that interest and the original amount, that's when I get this amount, right? Now, principal is given, compound interest is given, 975. When I add, I'll get amount. Put this amount here. Principal is here. R we obtained here, N is what we have to find out. Now, so there is a direct formula, right, to find the period. We just went through. The direct formula is here. So this is the direct formula you can use. Log A minus log B by log 1 plus I, right? Or, or you can use this formula itself, this formula itself, and try to, uh, you know, get, find out R, right? What you will do? See, whenever you have power, that to eliminate that power, we use log. Logarithm is used to remove this power. So now this is what this is based on the theory of indices and logarithms, right? Now for this chapter, you should be uh, you know clear on logarithm concepts and theory of indices. Apply log on both sides basically, right? Apply log on both sides. 
when I apply log on both sides, this will become log 2.95 and this will become n. The power will come here and log of this entire thing. Then now, now I don't have power. I've eliminated because I've applied log. Now, now I know I'll find log of this separately, right? I can find log of this, log of this. Then I can divide it and I'll get n. So n is 18.29 years. Next one. In how many years the sum of rupees 2000, that means principal is 2000, becomes rupees 2205. It should become 2205. So amount should become 2205. At rate of 5%, R is 5% per annum, per annum. So yearly compounding is happening. So in this case, the formula is this one, right? This R that is given is effective. This becomes the effective rate of interest because it's compounded only once per annum. Now you substitute everything here, right? You have to find n, you have to find n. Again, same concept, apply log and then you'll get n. What principal will amount to rupees 46,000? You have to find principal. So first thing is you have to find principal will amount to rupees 46,000. So amount is given 46,000. Time is given seven years. So n is seven. Sometimes, sometimes I put n is equal to seven, t is equal to seven. That's okay, right? Either you can say t is equal to 7 or n is equal to 7. And 12% per annum. R is 12%. You need to find amount. Amount comes from this particular formula. Amount is total of principal plus simple interest. We don't know what simple interest is. We know amount. Amount is 46,000 rupees. Right? Uh, instead of simple interest, we can put PTR by 100 formula. Right? Instead of simple interest, we'll put PTR by 100. Amount is 46,000. And that way I'll find principal. Right? That way I'll find principal. So PTR by 100... I don't know P, I know T, which is 7 years, I know rate of interest, right? So I'll get, uh, I'll substitute this year and substitute uh, all of this year. Now from this P and P, I will try to get uh, on one side, both the P terms. So I'll get P is equal to 25,000 rupees. Next one, a certain sum of money, certain sum of money. That means I don't know the principle. So principle is question mark. Amounts to rupees 24,000, that means amount is 24,200 in 2 years, that means n is equal to 2 at 10%, right, that means r is 10%, find the sum, so I have to find the principal, right, straightforward, put this formula and substitute, you will get principal. Now here, next problem, in how many years, that means I have to find time, n, I have to find n, right, t or n, will a sum of money double itself, so my amount should be double, that is my final amount, should become double. Double of what? Double of the principal. Principal is what? The original money. The initial money. That is principal. Right? So amount is 2 times of principal. At 10% SI. That means rate of interest is 10%. Right? Now, amount is, you know, principal plus SI. We don't know the uh, simple interest, but we know the formula. Simple interest is PTR by 100. Right? So now, we don't know T. We know R is 10%. Uh, we don't know principal also. So we assume that principal is P. Right. Now we'll substitute all this. So you'll get 10 PT by 100. Right. Which is nothing but 0 0.1 PT. And P will leave it like this. Right. You're substituting in this particular formula. Instead of amount. What is amount? 2P. Put 2P here. Now. Now I'll get all the P terms to one side. So here what I'm doing. I'm taking P to the other side. I'm taking this P to this side. So it'll become 2P minus P which is P. Right. Now, again, I have this 0 0.1 into P2. So now, I'll shift P this side, right? So when I shift P this side, it'll become like this. P by P is equal to T into 0 0.1. Now, this and this will get cancelled. So I'll be left with 1, not 0. I'll be left with 1. Right? So 1 is equal to 0 0.1 T. Therefore, T is 10 years. Now, next one. Rupees 16,000 invested. That's when this is the initial amount. This is the principal. Invested at 10%. That means rate of interest is 10%. Compounded semi-annually. So there is semi-annually means two times in a year. Two times. Same as half yearly. Half yearly or semi-annually means the same. Right? Two times in a year. So once it is two times in a year, you need to put Q is equal to 2. And this rate of interest becomes nominal rate of interest. The capital R. Now it will become capital R is 10%. Here, what happens is we'll have to first find effective rate of interest. And effective rate of interest formula is 1 plus I by Q to the power Q. I is the nominal rate of interest, right? The nominal rate of interest, which is 10%, right? Once I get this effective rate of interest, I put this effective rate of interest in this, this particular actual compound interest formula. 
uh, you know the principal is 16,000. You get the rate of interest from this formula which is 0 0.5. N is what we have to find out, right? N is what we have to find out. Amount is given as 18,522, right? Now, you will get, now we will get N here. Now again, how do I uh, find out N? Apply log on both sides. So when I apply log on both sides, this will become log 1.157 and this will become N log 1.1025. This N, N, this power will come here, right? And then therefore I can find N. N will become uh, log of this by log of this. That's going to be N. So it's going to be 1.5 years. Next problem, a certain amount invested 4% compounded semi-annually. Same problem like earlier one. Amounts to rupees 78,030. So amount is 78,000. Rate of interest is 4%. Compounded semi-annually. That means two times compounding is happening in a year. So Q is equal to. They have not given number of years, but they have given at the end of one year. At the end of one year means period is 1. N is 1. You have to find the sum. Find the sum means principal. Find the sum means principal you have to find out. So let's find principal. Now again, we'll use the same formula. But remember one thing. Here it's multi-compounding. Right? Multiple compounding is happening in a year. So this is also similar to the other problem, right? Here also you have to find effective rate of interest first because what you've given is nominal rate of interest. You have to find effective rate of interest using the formula, this one. This one, R is equal to 1 plus I by Q to the power Q. Now, there are two methods, right? You can directly, you can find this R and then substitute R in this particular formula or you can directly use this. You can directly use this formula, right? So this R, you have to put this 4% here and you put the uh, Q, which is number of times that the compounding happens, right? You can directly use this formula instead of using, instead of using this, getting R and substituting in this, you can directly do this also. So here we have put rate of interest as 4, we have put number of times compounding that is 2, right? And 2 here, principal you have to find, amount is given. So you'll find principal here, 75,000 rupees. Next problem, the cost of a refrigerator is rupees 27,000. It depreciates at the rate of 8%. Find its value after 4 years. So it's a depreciation formula. So A is equal to P into 1 minus R to the power N. Same formula as compound interest, but instead of plus, it is minus here. Right? That's all. Direct substitution and you'll get the amount. XYZ supplies buy a machine for rupees 20,000 at the rate of depreciation as 10%. So depreciation rate is 10%. Principal is 20,000. They are buying a machine. So that machine that is bought, that cost becomes principal. Find the depreciated value. That means amount you have to find. Find the depreciated value after 3 years. So after 3 years, how is this value going to reduce? Right? So that amount you have to calculate. So let's use the depreciation formula, which is A is equal to P into 1 minus R to the power N. N is equal to 3. It's 3 years here. You are substituting 3 years. R is 0 0.1. Principal is 20,000. Amount is 40,580. So, the value is going to become 14,580. Initially, you had bought it for 20,000. But after 3 years, the value of that particular machine becomes 14,580. So, what is the depreciated value? Right? Depreciated value. What is the difference? It's nothing but original value P minus amount. This becomes depreciated value. P is equal to 20,000 minus uh, the final amount. So this difference becomes a depreciated value. It is 5,420. This is the depreciated value. Here's the list of five marker problems. If the difference between simple interest and compound interest for three years at two and a half percent is rupees 625, find the sum invested. Find the sum invested means to find principal. The difference between simple interest and compound interest, that is CI minus SI is 625 rupees, right? What is N? It's 3 years. N is 3. Rate of interest 2.5%, right? Principle we have to find. R we know. N we know. Amount we don't know. Principle we don't know, right? All we know is this difference. So what we can do is, you have to take simple interest formula. You will have to take compound interest formula. First do that. Simple interest is PTR by 100. Substitute whatever we know, interest, time, right? So, you'll get simple interest as 0.075p. Now, similarly, you come to compound interest formula. P is equal to 1 plus R to the power N. R is 2.5, N is 3, 
we don't know a and b leave it like that only here we need to get compound interest so take the compound interest formula which is a minus b a is this entire thing right a is this entire thing so instead of a here what i'm putting this one instead of a instead of a i'm putting this one this entire thing i'm putting this minus p i don't know so i leave it like that so this is compound interest right now if you notice here i have compound interest here i have simple interest right i'll call this as 1 i'll call this as 2 now i know the difference between these two which is given as 625 rupees so let me subtract both ci minus si 625 instead of ci i'll put this this entire thing and instead of si i'll put this entire thing right instead of ci i put this this one and instead of si i put this one now I'll, i can find p value p is this much this is slightly tricky slightly tricky it's better to practice this problem one or two times right next one find the difference between si and ci on rupees 18000 invested so principal is 18000 4 years t or n is 4 rate of interest is given it's compounded annually okay see earlier they had given the difference in earlier problem here we need to find the difference so we need to find this si minus ci rate of interest is given again we'll use the comp uh, amount formula compound interest formula substitute whatever you know you'll get amount here now from this amount you can find compound interest you know amount you know principal you can find compound interest see ultimately what do we have to find we have to find si minus ci that means you have to find ci you have to find si only then you can find the difference now to find ci what is ci ci is a, a minus p right i know p but i don't know a how do i get a by using this formula i'll get a right so i now i know ci similarly i'll do the same thing for si simple interest simple interest is ptr by 100 i'll substitute whatever i know i'll get simple interest now here i have compound interest here i have simple interest find the difference i'll get the difference here next one if rupees 9000 amounts to rupees 10418 right that means this is principal amounts to rupees this that means this is amount time is 3 years find the compound rate interest find the compound rate interest rate percent remember it's rate percent r percent you have to find so again take this main formula amount is there principal is there r we have to find n is 3 that's all now you'll find r again you have to use uh, log here because there is power here since there is power you'll have to use log so what will happen when i use log it will become log of this and log of this entire thing when i take log what will happen it will become log 10418.625 is equal to log 9000 log of this entire thing so it will be log 9000 plus log 1 plus r this power 3 i can put here right it's plus you know why i put plus in logarithmic laws right now you have two terms here you can call this as m you can call this as n so when i put log it will become log mn this is how it's going to be right when i apply log now since there is multiplication here i can split it log mn is equal to log m plus log n this is the logarithmic property if it's multiplication i'll make it into addition so it's 9000 into 1 plus r to the power 3 right so i'll, I'll put addition here like this here i'll put addition so 9000 plus and this power will become 3 log 1 plus r now i can shift this here so when i shift this here it will become log this portion minus this portion like this then i'm left with 3 log 1 plus r right so now i bring 3 this side it will come to the denominator because this is multiplication 3 into so when i get to the other side it will become division now how do i remove log here i need r right so i have to remove this log if i have to remove log i have to put anti log on the other side this side i have to put anti log and now i'll shift one here so when i shift one it will become minus one right and then i'll be left with this i or r that i have to find out so I have to find anti log of this and then i will get i that is why direct formula also can be used so if you find it difficult to uh, you know do that particular steps then you can directly use this anti log formula directly use this the next problem find compound interest on rupees 7500 that means principal is 7500 14 percent rate is 14 percent four and a half years n is four and a half so if i convert this into a proper fraction it will become nine by two while interest is calculated half yearly that means there is multiple compounding in a year 
so q is equal to 2 q is equal to 2 now since there is multiple compounding here whatever rate is given this is this is nominal rate of interest i have to find the effective rate of interest i have to find effective rate of interest r is equal to using this formula right it's compounded twice so it is two times here and this is rate of interest 14% i'll write it in decimal form i'll get r i'll get r now i have to find compound interest what is the formula for compound interest amount minus principal principal is given amount instead of amount i can put this formula amount is p into 1 plus r to the power n right r we have got from here put r here n is 9 by 2 this one and we find compound interest right this way next one a person borrows a certain sum of money at 3% he borrows a certain sum of money at 3% simple interest right now he is borrowing from somebody some money at 3% rate of interest right and that's nothing but simple interest so let's assume that the money that he borrows is p we don't know they have not given the sum of money here so we assume it to, to be principal rate of inter interest is 3% right now time time is 3 years so what we will do we'll first find simple interest simple interest is 3 years 3% right we don't know principal so we'll get 9p by 100 this is simple interest so what is amount amount is simple interest plus principal right so you'll get this much 109p by 100 now what is happening here is he borrows some money from person a at simple interest and takes that money and invests that money somewhere else he puts that money somewhere else at a compound interest rate at five percent he is taking money at three percent and investing somewhere else at five percent now obviously there's going to be profit because he takes money at a lower rate of interest and then makes an investment at a higher rate of interest so there is profit and that profit is 1082 rupees now we need to find what is the amount he is borrowed that means we have to find principal now after doing all this first step always right remember find simple interest find amount keep it aside now they are talking about compound interest so again find compound interest compound interest formula is at 5% so for, to find compound interest you have to find amount right amount is principal into 1 plus r to the power n r is 5% p rate is 3 years principal we don't know right so we will get amount here now from compound interest you have one amount from simple interest you have one amount the difference between this is what is this profit basically this is the money that he is paying because he has borrowed the money here since he has borrowed the money and he is paying interest on that money at three percent so final amount that he has to pay when he has to repay that money to that particular person he has to pay this much 109 p by 100 this, this is what he has to pay back now he makes an investment now when he makes an investment at five percent he will get some amount and after three years he'll get some amount right say a2 now the difference between this this he is going to is, is going to repay and still he'll have some money left right because he is investing at higher rate of interest that means he'll get more money the difference is what is the profit and the profit is given as 1082 right now i substitute whatever i've got here as a2 na1 now i'll get p from this i'll get p this is the principal this is the amount that he has borrowed 16000 next problem a person borrowed 65000 at 8 percent per annum si for four, four years first let's write down borrowed 65000 that means 65000 is principal rate of interest is 8 percent uh time is four years he lent out the money for 10 percent ci now he lent out the money for 10 percent ci for four years now let's make two sections like the earlier problem first find si and a right so let's find si and a si is ptr by 100 we know p we know t we know r so we'll directly get si now we have found simple interest let's go to compound interest you have to find out how much how much gain that person made he is borrowing the money at eight percent and he is lending that money to somebody else at ten percent there's obviously profit for him he is getting money at eight percent and is and and is giving to some other person at ten percent right now what will be the difference the difference is nothing but the profit is nothing but simple interest minus compound interest simple interest minus compound interest will give you the gain so it should be this is the gain ci minus si we found si here we have to find ci to find ci i need to find amount amount is equal to principal to 1 plus r to the power n n is 4 years rate of interest is 
10 percent year period is 4 years 65,000 is principal so I'll get amount now from amount I can find compound interest this is my compound interest right this is the compound interest I know simple interest I know compound interest find the difference that's the gain last problem a sum of money amounts to rupees 9500 so amount is 9500 in 5 years period is 5 years and rupees 22 and 22200 after 8 years so after 5 years the money becomes 19500 after 8 years the money increases and it becomes 22200 so let's say amount 1 is 19500 this is after 5 years amount 2 is 22200 after 8 years at the same rate of interest find the principal and rate of interest you have to find these two now we'll take amount 1 we'll take a1 in separate section a2 in separate section a1 is p plus si they put si here so we'll have to use simple it is formula so instead of si i'll put directly the formula ptr by 100 so now we don't know r and we don't know p right so whatever we know we'll put that expression here similarly we'll go to we'll find amount 2 here again here only difference between this and this is here it is period is 8 years and here it is 5 years here it is 5 years here it is 8 years so you'll get two expressions from both the expressions try to get principal out that is from this expression you find p p will be this much right now from this expression also you try to get p p will be this much now if you lo look at both the expressions p is same principal has to be same right principal cannot change so this is same since left hand side is same this right hand side also has to be same this and this has to be equal that's what i'm writing here from one and two from one and from two i'll say right hand side both of these are equal now you see only r is here now you evaluate simplify this and find out r so we'll get r as 5.99 percent approximately six percent now you know r take any of this equation equation one or equation two substitute r value you'll get principal value like this so with this we've come to the end of this particular topic if you have found this video useful do press a like and share it thank you